What's up? Dan Blewett here, and this is the first installment of Dear Baseball Gods in a while. So if you're watching this in podcast land, thanks for coming back. You probably figured I abandoned the show, but I haven't. Just on sabbatical, really. And if you're here in YouTube land, well, hello again, because I've been posting a, a pretty good amount on YouTube pretty consistently, and uh, that's going to continue. But So number one, let me address why... I've been absent on the Dear Baseball Gods podcast. So number one, and before I do all that, let me preface this video and this podcast. So number one, I'm going to give you the short version of what I'm doing with my life in about four or five minutes. After that, I'm going to go back and I'll give you the long version, the much more detailed version. So if you're stopping in, you want to watch this, but you don't feel like watching a 45 minute video or whatever this turns out to be, I'm going to give you everything you need to know the short version in like four or five minutes. So stick with me. Okay. So number one, I have not done a podcast because back in January, February, I basically rewrote my whole book, Dear Baseball Gods. And I had this deadline that I imposed on myself because at some point your baby needs to leave the nest. So upon giving my final draft back, I rewrote the, rewrote the whole thing, um, which was unintended, but it happened. And the book got a lot better because of it. I was happy the way it went. It just, it, the book became very different with, with each draft, especially the fifth and final one. So anyway, my life was like completely and utterly consumed by the book in January, February, and just things had to get cut. And then as soon as I released the book in April, after March was a pretty heavy month marketing it, um, I was in Turkey for 24 days, and that was also insane. Uh, very fun, interesting, fascinating, but insane kind of like wraps up that story. And if you haven't seen my Turkey experience, definitely jump on YouTube. I vlogged about it. I think I did like 12 episodes from while I was there. A lot of content on what I did in Turkey, teaching the locals how to play baseball and also picking the national team and traveling with them and doing that stuff. So then I got back and the first thing we had to do was Lucas and I had to announce to people that we were closing Warbird Academy, my baseball academy. So if you haven't seen that video, which we filmed a 12 minute video explaining why we were doing that. And it's on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. It's, it's been viewed a lot. It actually, we put it on Facebook and on YouTube that got about, I think 5,000 views between the two. And then we have a small town. So it's a, it's big news. We've been a staple in this town, Bloomington normal for a long time. And it was not a small deal when that happened. Um, so a lot of people viewed it. But anyway, if you haven't, definitely check that out. I'll go into the reasoning more in the long version of this, of this podcast. But so we had to figure out how to strategically tell everyone because we still had our teams, which are currently playing. I'm coaching our 15U team and I'm helping with our 14U team. Lucas Cook, my partner, is coaching the 16U Warbird Senators. So we wanted to make sure everyone knew so they could make preparations because we were decided we were closing in August, which as of today, which is July 8th, is about three weeks away. Um, we decided that we need to tell people so they could figure out what they were doing and find new summer baseball teams for next year and go to tryouts and all that stuff. We didn't want to leave people high and dry. We also wanted to give them two months to use up any credit they had with us and because we didn't want to take anyone's money without them getting pretty much full use of what they paid us. So we announced that on June 1st. And it was really, really difficult. It was hard to disappoint that many kids and families that have relied on us for a long time to also just break up with all these people that have been a staple in our lives because we care a lot about all of our clients, you know, the families. We've had a, a really amazing run here. Um, and what predicated this whole thing was just me retiring from baseball. So my book, Dear Baseball Gods, this podcast, which has taken many forms over the years, it was an outlet for me to figure out what the hell this whole thing was about because I played baseball till I was 30 and I was privileged to have played that long, even though I didn't make it to the major leagues and I, I retired an indie, indie league only player. Um, I played till I was 30 and I was still chasing my childhood dream at age 30. And then one day I woke up and I wasn't, I was no longer a ball player and I wasn't doing any of those things that I had to look forward to for so long. So I had this major identity crisis, which I've talked to talked about at length on this uh, on YouTube and on this podcast. I'm not going to go into that in depth right here, but it was hard. It was hard to figure out what I wanted for the rest of my life. Did I want to live in Bloomington Normal, which I've lived here for nine years now? Did I want to continue being a baseball academy owner and doing lessons and strength training and all that stuff full time like I have? 
or is there something else? And if it's something else, what is it? And so when I really think about all of the things that drive me, um, they've changed over the years. And I was 24 when I moved out here. I'm 33 now. I've grown up a lot. My partner, Lucas Cook, has grown up a lot. So it's it's been almost like a post-secondary education or like a tertiary education running this business. And so over a couple years, the dust settled and uh, I started just doing stuff on the web. I started creating online courses, which I like somehow haphazardly found when I was trying to establish an email list so I, so I could potentially sell my book to people so people would actually read it when I wrote it. Um, I just kind of fell down the rabbit hole and started creating things and I started writing again. Obviously I was writing the book and blogging and, and started doing YouTube and the quality of everything that I've created has drastically increased. Like this video, the production of it, the audio quality, I'm using my lavalier mic, which you can't see today. So I'm not using my normal podcast mic just for convenience. Um, but I've gotten heavy into the tech of all this stuff. And, and anyway, so What's happening with me is, um, so, so in, in June, we, we announced to everyone that Warbird Academy would be closing. They would have to find new teams, new coaches to, to train them in the winter. And, you know, we had to basically uproot them and kick them out the door, which sucked. And it was really difficult for all of us. It was, a, it was an emotional video for us breaking the news to them. And we're about five weeks past that, and it's starting to get close. So I'm three weeks away from closing our doors. Uh, we're in the process of trying to sell the business and what that looks like if we can sell the whole business to someone or if we're just going to sell it our equipment. We don't have a, a definite answer to that as of today. So that's a big kind of dark cloud that we're trying to figure out. But basically what's happened in the last couple months has derailed me so much that the podcast was just the odd men out. Now, the other thing is with this podcast, I haven't exactly known what it was about. Back in the day when it started, I was interviewing like teammates and former coaches and um, trying to get people to tell their stories and kind of share some of the hard times they had in baseball and the lessons they learned, and which was what I was doing with my book. And so it was kind of a way for me to get people familiar with the stories I was going to tell in my book and maybe get some interest and some buzz going about the book that's now out there. So if you haven't read my book, I highly recommend it. I think it's really good. It's gotten good reviews so far and not just for my mom. Um, so definitely check it out, reading it. And in all of that, I've, I've been continuing to work on the audiobook version of it, which has been an absolute nightmare. I had no idea it was that, that amount of work. I'm very lucky that podcasting and doing all this tech stuff that I do has prepared me to actually do it myself. But the editing is just exhausting. It's a huge amount of work. It's really hard. I'm committed to getting it right, so I'm scrubbing every mouth mouth noise clean, and uh, it's just a it's just a mountain. So I have probably 40, 35 percent of it to go. So I've done a lot of it. It's uh, it's all almost all been recorded, and again, about two thirds of it's been edited. It still has a lot of hours left to go. I'm trying to finish it before the end of the summer, but I'm doing this this video right here, which is taking me away from it. So anyway. Um, that's been the reason this podcast has been on hiatus. And so for me, I've been trying to figure out what phase two of my life looks like. And basically, because I'm going to end this short version, it was definitely not four minutes. We're at like nine minutes now, but I apologize. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving this town. I'm leaving my academy and I'm leaving this life as a baseball academy instructor and owner. Um, to sort of be a nomad for a while. So in a month, plus or minus, well, not minus, in a month, give or take a couple weeks, it might be towards the middle half or end of August, um, I'm going to pack up and I'm going to drive back to Virginia where my sister lives and probably put my two suitcases worth of belongings in her spare bedroom and start trying to forge my way into a full-time speaking career. Because I've figured out that what I'm the most passionate about, and you can probably maybe tell this from this channel and from my podcast and from my writing if you read it, is packaging things I've learned in a meaningful way and in an understandable way. And that's one of the things I find challenging about YouTube and I find challenging about blogging, although less so about blogging, um, is how can I make a concept that took me a lot of difficult times or was complex to learn 
how can I just sort of reshape that and spit that back out so your 12 year old son can understand it and like really gets it. I've told so many kids things that I've learned that I learned in my 20s. They learn now when they're 13, when they're 14 and they get it. And that's exciting to me that I can not only pass on what I've learned, but do so to them much earlier so they can use it for many more years and hopefully avoid a lot of the stuff that was a pitfall to me. And so through all this, uh, I've decided that my, I guess, artistic bones or creative bones are really the ones that are kind of driving me. And so as I leave this town, I'm still going to be a heavy like ambassador for baseball. That's definitely not changing. I'm not going to change any of the web stuff that's going on. I'm not, my podcast will restart. Uh, my YouTube channel will go into high gear. It's in like medium gear right now. Um, I'm going to probably write a book a year for the next 10 years. And uh, I will speak somewhere near you, no matter where you are, sometime in the next two or three years. So I have one speaking gig lined up in Boston right now, which is Sabre Seminar, my third visit there. Um, I also am not quite there yet, but... I'm a couple weeks away from starting to actually pitch myself to other people, to baseball organizations, to colleges, to solicit my speaking services. So I have no illusions about uh, getting paid large sums of money right away. It's going to be like anything else where I'm going to have to grind it out and do a lot of free talks, which is fine. Um, just like anything else, I'm, I think, a naturally decent speaker, but I'm prepared to put in the work and practice and really hone that craft just like I have everything else. So I know for a fact I can be a world-class speaker on some different topics that are personal to me, but just like anything, it's, it's foreign to me how I get into that. How, how do these people that are paid a lot of money and can do it full time and get in front of big audiences, how did they get there? It's always an enigma. That's what everyone sort of worries about when they're trying to go out and do this. Like, Oh, how did that person get there? Um, there's never like a big secret. There's never like something they did. It was always just, they got themselves out there and they started doing it and the rabbit hole, they just followed it and here they are. So I'm just starting that process now. And, uh, I know it'll take me in the right direction because I know the kind of stuff that I've been putting out and I know what my message is and I continue to get better at it. At least I think so. So that's sort of what's going on. So if you don't know any of this stuff, if this is all new to you, um, I currently live in Bloomington, Normal, Illinois. In a month, I won't. Um, I won't really have a permanent residence. I'll kind of be based at my sister's, which I'm excited about because I love her to death and I haven't seen her uh, for more than like five days straight in 10 years. So, you know, I've been home to Maryland, you know, want for a week or two, a couple times a year. And, uh, you know, I miss my parents and my brother and my sister and my friends out there. But Baltimore, where I grew up, doesn't feel like home. Um, Bloomington Normal here has been wonderful to me, but it's also not my home. And one of the things I learned when I was throughout all this is just I grew up and I'm more like a city person. And I really love cities. Every time I'm in a city, I feel like there's a million things to explore. I'm content to walk around by myself and figure out sort of the nooks and crannies of it and the, the energy and the vibe. And I think cities are fascinating. So my tentative plan when I leave is to figure out how I can live in Austin, Texas for two months and speak at every school in Austin or in the surrounding area, um, high school and college. And, uh, then mosey on to, I don't know, San Diego and then to Seattle and then to Columbus, Boston, I figure I can do that. And if I can't, I'll figure that out, but pretty sure I can finagle that somehow. And as I travel and probably plummet into credit card debt for a bit, making this work, um, I'm going to continue to put out lots of free content on YouTube. I'm going to continue to put out a podcast. I'm going to continue to do all this stuff. Um, really just more giving and hoping people find value in what I do. And then maybe they want to buy one of my courses or they want to buy my book and they want to put some money in my pocket so I can keep doing it. That's honestly like the, the long and the short of my plan, but I know the value of what I do and I feel like it's going to work out. And then at some point with all these clinics that I do and I'll do baseball clinics and softball throwing clinics around the country and 
hopefully get to do more international stuff with the WBSC and the ISG like I did with Turkey. Um, I'm sure I'll get pulled in all sorts of different directions, but that right now is the plan. So uh, again, if you're if you weren't privy to any of this, um, that's what's happening. And in a month, I'll be on the East Coast, at least for the time being, and I'll be plugging away at finding places to go and people to get in front of to share my message and go from there. So that's the short version of this. We'll see, we're at like 15 minutes. Um, so hopefully I kept you and if not, no big deal. But let me start back from the beginning. So back a year ago, uh, Lucas, my partner and I, we sat down and I started to feel like, all right, I've asked myself, do I want to lay deeper roots here in Bloomington? Do I want to go elsewhere? Like, what do I feel phase two of my life looks like? Cause as a, I was at like 31, well, I guess I was 32 a year ago. Um, as a 32 year old, I'm getting pretty old and I'm not certainly not in a rush to get married. I'm not in a rush to do all the quote unquote typical things. Um, I'm happy with the life I'm living, but, uh, it was a inflection point. I need to either lay deeper roots or I need to pull my roots out. And so that was a year ago. And I said, I could do two more years here. And then six months into that, I just felt myself becoming too absent minded to, to do that. And I started tunneling my way out of here by building online courses and rebuilding my website and my, my email list and sending people meaningful emails every week with new content, like stuff to help them. Um, and that was, that's been what I've been doing and it's consumed all of my free time, which I'm happy about. Cause I actually really enjoy that. People don't understand with me. They say, you know, I, I, I work all the time. Now I obviously have lots of attention issues like everyone else does. I'm not constantly like putting word to paper, but I don't really have hobbies. I don't really like feel compelled to take a vacation. And if I like go travel to a city, I'm usually working on my laptop for most of the day. I just come wandering around and stopping at a coffee shop and just doing my thing. But when I say work, like I'm writing or I'm creating a video or I'm scheming about a video or I'm editing my audiobook or I'm just doing all these other things that I really enjoy doing. And, uh, it's the same as a carpenter who's just like constantly in the woodshed, like sculpting new stuff and making new furniture and making new carvings or whatever it is. Um, the one thing I figured out as I've aged is that I'm more of a creative type than I guess I thought. And video has been really fascinating. I've learned so much about it. I've got a new camera. This camera is way better. My audio is way better. I color grade these at the end just so they look a little nicer. Um, and I'm confident that the YouTube content that I put out, this video and my others are good. They're better than others, I think, in the baseball industry. And that doesn't mean that their content's worse than mine because there's some really good guys putting out content. And if you don't know that, you should Google and find guys like John Madden and, and Matt Antonelli. There's guys that do great work on YouTube that have been at it a long, lot longer than I am. Um, but the interesting thing about the web is that it's not a it's not competitive in the same way as like baseball is where only one of us is getting promoted. You could watch my video, then go watch five other guys videos and just take what you want. And we all got viewed for the day or whatever. Um, it's not anti-competitive or in, in any sense. So it's been interesting just trying to like figure out what a Dan Blewett video looks like and what is, what do one of my books look like? What is my style? And I can do whatever I want to do and I can have whatever kind of voice I want. I can make whatever kind of content and I don't feel constrained by anything. When I look at what other people do, um, not just in the baseball realm or softball realm, but in what vloggers are doing. Cause I really enjoyed vlogging. I've been sort of on hiatus on that too, because I just been too busy, um, with all the Academy stuff, coaching of 15 U baseball team, all these things that are going on. But uh, there's there's no limit to what I can do and how I can do it because I don't I don't care. Like I, I can try something new and it can fail. Um, I can try new styles of video editing. I can do all sorts of stuff. And so to me, this whole process has just been, again, like finding out what I'm interested in and who I am and what I want to do. And I'm not a nine to five person. 
I'm not a small town person and I'm prepared to kind of go all in with all that stuff. But so I learned that over time slowly. And so when I went to Lucas, we talked about, all right, let's revamp our teams and some of our business structure. Let's get this place more profitable than it's been. Let's get everything going. So when I leave in two years, you guys don't even need me anymore. That was the goal. So we worked towards that. Um, but one of the things we found was that we could never just replace ourselves. Lucas and myself were just, we are Warbird. We are our academy. And with service-based businesses like this, uh, whether you're a Pilates instructor or a yoga studio or a personal trainer or a strength coach or a pitching coach, people go to you because of you. And even if you could package your systems and all that stuff and give it to another person, it just never is the same. It's not to say that person can't be great at their job too, but a lot of times they go to you because of the personal connection that they've forged. And so in trying to make myself replaceable, it just hasn't worked. And to make Lucas, who does tons of hitting lessons, he's doing a hitting lesson right now, I'm sure. Um, I didn't have many today. He's just not replaceable. And so in a smaller town, there's less talented uh, coaches around who want to do it full time. People are eager to get into a stable nine to five job. It's definitely in an unstable uh, environment, unstable job that we've had. I mean, we could go out of business at any time. Fortunately, we never did. Um, but that was, you know, what we did for so long. And so I could feel myself as I started to find out new things that I was passionate about, like my videos and my writing and all this other stuff. I just found myself in lessons with the gears just whirring away and I couldn't turn them off. And I didn't want to feel like I was doing a lesson with someone where I couldn't focus, but I could just feel that I just want to get back to work on the new stuff that was, that I was passionate about because I'd done thousands of pitching lessons and I'm still passionate about it, but I need to shift the dosage away from most of my day being pitching lessons to a small part of my day. And most of my day being some of the new stuff that's challenging to me. And so it was just coming to terms with that, that I couldn't do the two years that I told him that I could do. And that was it. And so we planned like, what did he want to do with the business? Um, what was it going to look like if I left and he stayed and kept the business going? Um, how would we want to do all that? And his decision was that he's got some other stuff going. He's strength coach at Heartland community college. He's, uh, a accomplished professor there as well. He's teaching four classes next year. He enjoys doing some new challenging things too. Um, he still enjoys working with kids as do I, uh, but running a two man show that's been exhausting as a one man show, it's just a lot of extra work that he'll have to pick up to make it all work. And so his decision was that with me going, it was probably time for him to go as well. And so that's why we decided to close the business. And so uh, I sprung that on him again a year ahead of schedule, but it just was what it was. And so being super supportive as he always has, he understood. And, and that's just the decision that we made. And so now with all this, it's, uh, it's, it's complicated in trying to figure out how do we close it? How do we, what does it look like at the end? Um, what do our lives look like? Because we've done well with uncertainty. I've done well with uncertainty. My baseball career has been super duper uncertain every year. I've been hurt. And, uh, you know, with our kids, we had a big talk as a team because they were getting eaten up a little bit inside, wondering about who they're going to play for next year and worried about tryouts and all that stuff. And uh, we talked to just about uncertainty. And that's the hardest part about everything, and not just in baseball, but in life. And, you know, I reminded them that in 2014, I was poised to make this big comeback. My second Tommy John surgery, like I'm coming back, I'm shipping off. I had a spring training contract with the Somerset Patriots and I was ready. And then I got cut and then I had nowhere to play. And then I had aged out of my previous league. And so there I was in Maryland for almost two weeks, sleeping on my buddy's couch, sleeping at my parents' house, sleeping at my sister's house. Um, not knowing if I'd ever get a call or if my career was over at that point. I didn't know because how many people wanted a 28 year old who just had his second Tommy John surgery and hasn't thrown a competitive pitch in two years. 
So that situation was just a waited out. I got a call with, from Camden and I ended up spending two great years with the Camden River Sharks. Had some awesome times in Philadelphia, uh, living right there on the river, the Delaware River, and um, getting a chance at Long Island the next year and then succumbing to shoulder pain and getting released and trying to come back and failing. And so all that uncertainty is familiar to me. And so um, helping our kids through it a little bit was part of the deal. And uh, But with all of us, it's just a lot of uncertainty. So right now, we don't know what the status of selling the business is. Um, we have some interested buyers. We might have to, there's just lots of different options and different ways it could go down. It's, it's complicated. But the thing I turn to at the end is no matter what happens with it, there's definitely a best possible scenario and a worst possible scenario and many scenarios in between. I'm not going to die. Um, I'm not going to go to debtor's prison because there's no debtor's prison. I could be in debt. I could be not in debt. There's just like lots of options, but either way, it feels very scary and unsettling, um, not knowing what the business is, what's going to happen in the next three weeks of the business and uh, not knowing where my income is going to come from thereafter because I'm not getting a job and I have to solicit for business. So I have to email people and say, hey, work with me as a pitching coach, pay me, um, have me come speak at your school and pay me to do so so I can buy food to eat. Uh, that's all in my future. And it's not an easy thing to do, but pretty confident I'm not going to die. And I'm pretty confident I'm going to be good at what I do. And I'm pretty confident that if all these other people have done it, who are now successful speakers or give clinics around the country and do all the things that I want to do, uh, they're there. So I feel like I can make it happen. And so all the baseball stuff um, prepared me for this. And that's why I wrote my book, because there's so many lessons in there that helped prepare me for today that could help prepare you as a parent for whatever in your career, help give you more vision into your kid's career, help a young pitcher or a young softball player, a young baseball player understand more of the hardship that they'll face and the way to respond to it. Um, all that stuff is why I wrote my book. And it's still, they're like lessons for me still today because I have as much uncertainty as possible. My sister and my parents keep asking me, when do you come back to Maryland? I don't know. Uh, I know I'm speaking in Boston on August 9th. That's the only hard date that I have. Our business is supposed to be closing August 1st. Um, if we don't have a buyer for the entire business at that point, do we still pay that rent for the next month? Do we eat another month's rent? Do we have to clean the place out? Does someone else move in? We're not, it's like all completely down to the wire. And after that, I'm definitely still going to drive out with no appreciable income and be just freaking winging it. So that's, that's, that's the long story of my life at the moment. Um, and it's weird because as a 33 year old who chases dream playing pro baseball for a long time, you, it's really easy for all of us to look back and say, man, I'm 33 and what do I have to show for any of it? You know, I don't have a house. I don't have, I personally don't have a wife or kids. Um, all the things that like stable 33 year olds have, they you know have had a job for 10 years. They've been building income. They have money in a 401k. They have all this like stuff that they've accumulated. Um, I don't have any of that. And a lot of guys that retire from pro sports don't have any of that stuff. And uh, you look back and you're like, why, why did I do all that? But um, that thought in my mind doesn't last very long because the game that I play is, well, if I had a half a million dollars in the bank right now, which I don't, would I feel different about my future than I do? And I wouldn't. So money to me would just make me more stable. I could go where I wanted to go today. I could go where I wanted to go tomorrow and not worry about where I'm staying or how much I'm spending on, on parking or gas or food or whatever. Um, I wouldn't have any of those worries, but what I'd be doing wouldn't be different. And so that to me just reminds me that I'm on the right track, I guess. So whether I had money or don't have money, because currently I have about 
the least amount of money I've ever had because of just the way the things have shaken out. Um, but I just don't care. And I don't feel nervous for my future, even though there's tremendous uncertainty. I don't feel like I should go get a job and have financial security. Don't feel that way at all. Um, and even though I'm fairly financially unstable because of all that, I don't, I just don't care. Um, because I believe in what I'm doing with being honest in videos like this. Like I don't, I don't have any reservations about telling you that I'm going forward into a very uncertain time in my life that in pretty much all aspects, I'm on shaky ground. I don't know where I'm living. I don't know where I'm getting my income from. I don't know what my future holds at all. Uh, and I'm honestly very fine with that, but it's just, uh, and again, I think, I think sports have prepared me for that. And, um, I think we can all relate to that because I guarantee someone who's watching this video, you, whoever you are, you're planning a career change yourself and you feel the same things that I do. You want to quit your job because you hate it. Um, but then do you get a better job? Does your salary plummet? Can you pay your mortgage anymore? Um, like I wouldn't trade the stuff that I'm doing and the stuff that I'm excited to do in the future, the books that I'm going to write, the videos I'm going to create the people I'm going to speak in front of, I wouldn't trade that for financial stability. I wouldn't trade that for a pretty house. I wouldn't trade that for any of that stuff that other people find valuable, which I'll find valuable at some point, And it's certainly valuable. Um, but I wouldn't trade what I'm doing for any of that. And so I think I can wear it for a while and we'll just see how it shakes out. But again, at the end of the day, trying all the stuff I'm going to try isn't going to kill me. So I don't really guess know where the risk is, but with everything in just like observing yourself grow up and observing yourself go through really profound life changes. Like nine years ago, I moved out here and I was suddenly in, in an Illinois resident. I'd only live in Maryland. I just graduated from college with a useless philosophy degree, which has proved out to be very valuable to me over the years. Um, not useless in any sense. And uh, you just start to figure out how things like work, not because like someone's guiding me or because it's just like things just work because when you continue to try and don't accept failure in a, like, a, oh, I can't do this anymore kind of way, um, things just continue to get better. And, you know, with surgery, with my elbow, um, it was always just one day at a time. And then one day you wake up and your elbow doesn't hurt anymore. And you don't remember, I, I think both times it was the same where my elbow hurt like literally every day and I was super pissed about it. And then one day I was playing catch and like halfway through, I looked down, I'm like, wait, my elbow doesn't hurt. And I feel like, again, when you look at people who are in places that you want to go, that that's how they get there. They grind and they grind and they grind and they grind. And then one day they're like, wait, I'm like, I'm like kind of there. Or like I'm kind of famous or I'm kind of, I have money in my bank account. Or like people are calling me all the time to like book me, whatever it is. Um, it's like that same thing. Like I looked down at my elbow, I'm like, wait, you don't hurt. It's like, wait, I'm here. And that was it. Like I was here. I was there when that one day when I'm playing catch the 15th day in a row, it hurt, but then the 16th day it didn't. And so it's, uh, it's just, but it's hard getting through all those days prior to that until that weird sort of epiphany happens. And even just like with podcasts, I, I, rem I distinctly remember my early podcasts, how, how many ums I said, how I just was bad at podcasting. And today I've been observing casually as I've been filming this video that I don't say I'm um that much. I don't stumble over my words as much. I talk a little more slowly, a little more deliberately, and things have just changed because I've been doing it for two years. And somewhere along the line, I became decent, whatever that means, at podcasting. And so here's what's going to happen going forward. Um, I'm going to continue to put out a lot of content on the web. Most of it is going to be completely free. 
Um, some of it is going to have like the YouTube ads turned on. So you'll get a five second ad before your video. That's something that will make me like a nickel. Um, I have all my online courses and my books and I'm confident at some point they'll support me and pay my bills. And if they don't, I'll figure out a way to make ends meet. Um, I'll be speaking at a school near you at some point. And if you're a coach or you're a parent or you run an organization, have me come speak. Um, maybe I'll do it for free and just try to sell books. You know, people will buy them because my message will be genuine and it'll be good. Um, and I'm going to make it work and I'm going to continue to put out good content for people that can't afford to pay my pay for my courses or buy my book or whatever it is. But, um, and I'm going to continue to translate my YouTube videos into 10 different languages, maybe more at some point if I get an assistant, um, so that people overseas, like my Turkish friends back home or not back home, <laughs> back in Ankara, uh, their home can continue to get better at baseball because they have literally no other resources. So that's sort of uh, my vision going forward. And it's all, none of it exactly interlocks. Like when I put out a YouTube video, I put more effort into each one every day. They get better and better, I think. Um, I put more and more time into making them engaging. Like how can I get people to, to watch them longer? How can I get people to actually like get the message and, and feel like they understand? How can I show and not just tell? Um, and this is a very tell oriented video, but it's just going to be long, but you know, all these things, how can I reach more people in a meaningful way? What is, what do people want? So if there's something you're searching for, let me know. Um, all that's going to continue to happen. And most of what I'm going to do is going to be sort of based around free information on the web, free YouTube videos, free blog posts, just good free information and then some percentage of people will buy one of my courses and they'll get great information from it they'll get the deepest knowledge that i have um some people want to work with me on, remotely so if you want a strength pro program from me or if you want pitching analysis i'm going to do a lot more of that going forward um that's wh that's where i'm at so i'm i'm transitioning from a real life everyday pitching lessons coach to a, I want to coach your kids through the web. I want to coach you if you're a pitcher or you're a softball player, um, help you through your strength training for the winter, help you through your mental training, help you understand the recruiting process, help you through all that stuff and just continue to be a good resource um, as I go. So none of it exactly is linear. None of it exactly, like I said, interlocks and makes sense, but uh, I feel like at some point it'll all sort of come together or maybe it won't. I don't know, but here's what to expect from this podcast. So I have plans for dear baseball gods and it's not to do this. It's not to have interviews. Um, it's for it to be an actual show. It's to be much more engaging than it is focus more on YouTube um, but still good in the podcast format. So what that means is me traveling around, me using my camera, going around, showing what people do, showing what coaches do, showing what players do, showing what teams do. Um, I just feel like this long format, this 30 to 60 minute format can just be better than one guy talking. It can be better than two guys talking. How many shows just interview people. I just don't want to do that. I just, at the end of the day, I just don't want to make stuff that feels boring to me. And I'm not saying that your daily podcast is boring because there's clearly amazing interviews. I mean, interviews are everywhere and interviews would be a piece of mine, but I have a bigger vision for what this podcast could be. And if I'm going to spend the time and the effort to make a weekly hour long show, it's not going to be this. So as my YouTube channels evolve, because I have the baseball one, which is branded with me, this is my, my logo, and then the Snap Softball YouTube channel, uh, as they go forward, I'm going to continue to vlog a lot. So you'll see lots of my daily life, not the stupid stuff, but just the, the 
me going to a, a seminar to speak, some of my speaking, um, me working with people, me going to a college and spending the day there, me going to a pro game and spending the day there, talking with coach. Like there's gonna be a lot of interactive content. Me in a new city, what I'm doing, tour the city with me, um, a lot of that stuff. That'll be my vlog. That will continue. That's been on hiatus as well, but that will come back. Um, my instructional videos will continue. So all the baseball how-to stuff, which is valuable not only for you, but for me and getting people to find me because no one searches for baseball vlog. People will search for how to throw a slider. Uh, all those instructional videos will, will continue. And I have another secret project that I'm not going to disclose uh, just because it's an idea that I feel like is extremely unique and I don't want to give it away. That's also going to be on YouTube. So all that stuff will continue. And really at the end of the day, more than anything, I'll be a speaker and I'll be a YouTuber. Um, but I know at my core, I'm probably best at writing and I'm going to continue to write. But even that's not going to be uh, this the typical inside the box kind of thing. Like I want to make content that makes sense to people. And that includes books. People don't read books as much anymore. And so my memoir, Dear Baseball Gods, my pitching book, those are my two. My next book is going to be completely different than both of those. I'm already, I've been playing it out today. I called a buddy who's going to collaborate with me. Um, that project is also under wraps, but there's nothing like it. And it makes a lot of sense. And it's going to help way more people in the format that it's going to take rather than the traditional format that other people to continue to take. And if it sucks, so be it, but it's not going to suck. It's going to be awesome. So I've got a lot of stuff going on and all that stuff is going to come together at some point, but I wanted to give an update on this podcast just to let everyone know like what's going on with me because a lot of new stuff is happening. I'm going to be on the road. I'm going to be out doing all this new stuff. So if you've been thinking about a way to work with me, now's the time. Reach out. Let me know what I can do for you. Um, if you're just looking for more podcasts, they're going to come back soon. It's probably going to come back in September because this next month in July is still crazy busy with my teams and giving them the best experience they can have in their last couple weeks. And then the transition out happens in August. So after August, when I'm through, when the dust is clear... All the stuff will take shape again. All your normal programming will resume, I guess you could say. And then there's going to be tons more than um, has been in existence to this point. So thank you for being here. I'm sure the listener base uh, on this, at least on podcast land, is probably smaller than it was because I haven't had anything for you in a couple months. But again, thank you for being here. Um, I look forward to the future. And I look forward to you being a part of it.